I appreciate everybody joining today. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. And I really, again, um, can't emphasize enough the importance as we see it of, of soil versus dirt. So this is a conversation I have a lot with farmers. Um, how do you define them? And we'll get into that a little bit in the presentation. But at the end of the day, we all want better soil. Like, how do we go about bringing life back to that soil? And that's really, um, for me, the the whole point of, of our product, our approach, and, and our impact is how do we help aid in this journey of rebuilding our topsoil? Um, foundationally, topsoil is, is the, the, the most critical asset we have. I think to a large degree, people have underestimated um, the impact that soil itself has on the health of a crop, on the, the yield, on disease, um, on, on so many facets of farming. But I'm going to take a little bit of time today. We're going to start off here with a question um, that ultimately walk you through how your soil is actually functioning. And then ultimately, as we come into harvest, what can we do later in the season here to actually really invigorate and, and drive life and drive organic matter and, and performance in our soil? So <clears throat> what if all the reasons you, you had that you have then tilling are gone. Um, tillage for us certainly is at the cornerstone of a lot of conversations we have as it relates to soil life and how to really build topsoil. Um, tillage has been a practice, obviously, uh, in the center of farming for a long time. But you know, I think there's just so much evidence that shows that if we can pull back minimal till, no till, um, that really does aid in the development of our topsoil and driving this whole process. So as we think about tillage, what if you didn't have compaction? One of the biggest things that that uh, is a misconception out there is people feel like you know traffic on the fields and everything else creates compaction. Foundationally, what creates compaction is a microbial problem, right? If you have the right biology in your soil, um, it literally builds your soil into macro aggregates. So think about a nesting of golf balls that just cannot be compacted. That's what your soil can become with the right biology. Um, so again, what if we got rid of compaction? What if, because of that healthier soil, that made it easier um, to get to your planting in? We're hearing farmers saving two, three, four, five gallons of, of fuel per acre, just pulling their planter because it's easier to get it into the ground, even if you're um, going through residue. <clears throat> if you get that um, easy planting um, and, and with the life, we start to, to drive stand counts because the microbes themselves actually will heat the soil and start to drive um, the temperature of that soil up, which again helps get us up out of the ground. As we build that soil, you have natural stress relief, you have drought resistance because you're holding moisture better. Um, you don't have the trash on top of your field, right? With right, right uh, biology, we can actually consume all that trash and move those nutrients down into the soil. At the same time, those same biology are converting your root mass into higher organic matter. So we actually can make um, no-till a profitable journey in terms of getting there. So historically, as we've thought about this, you look at the recommendation from a regenerative ag perspective of being stop tilling, add cover crops, give yourself time, let nature restore itself. We feel, and what we've proven is that we can profitably make that transition a much more thoughtful way. It's about let's put life in your soil first, let's get the population and the biology up and running, then you'll see that your soil starts to turn. The tilt of the soil will turn to where you say, okay, I don't have the compaction. So now you start to reduce tillage because you just don't need it as much. We take care of the fall of debris. We get that all broken down. You don't need to clean your field. So you're missing that tillage fast. All of a sudden you're moving into a place where you're disturbing the ground less. You're rapidly growing your organic matter. You're growing your biology. And this is driving to reduced inputs and higher profits. So again, making this transition into regenerative ag, we see it as a very exciting and profitable endeavor. How does this all happen? At the cornerstone of all this is the role of microbes. So if you think about microbes and what they actually do, um, one of the things that, that a lot of people don't really appreciate is they eat your fertilizer. They will outcompete your plant to actually consume um, your fertilizer. And, and the good news on that is that they're they're going to immobilize it because now it's inside of a bug and those bugs are going to naturally move to the root zone because that's where they get their food so your fertilizer is in the right place and it's and it's immobilized 
if you then have the right balance of biology to where you've got predators to predominantly the bacteria which hold on to your fertilizer, you can release those nutrients as needed, right? So as that plant is in need of a nutrient, it will literally signal the biology and like a, a fungi becomes predator to bacteria will consume that and release the nutrients. So again, we're, we're really dealing with nutrient release and the biology is eating the organic material and tur turning it into organic matter. So we're building our soil at the same time we're building a healthy crop. So as I like to relate this, if you think about microbes and their role in, in your soil, it's much like they are in our body. In our digestive tract, we have more microbes than we have cells in our body. So we rely on biology in our, in our digestive tract to get nutrients to us. That's much the same as what your soil should be doing for your plant. Um, again, it, it, it transfers and can break down and move those nutrients. It also is your immune system. And anytime you can have more good guys than bad guys, right? Um, and and uh, you can have the beneficial fungi, you won't have the pathogens. If you have the beneficial nematodes, you won't have the pathogens. So again, disease suppression comes from healthy soil. So again, as we're building this up, you need to, to, to continue to strengthen that microbial base so that we can move nutrients and, and resist disease. Um, the way that I connect that though, is you think about if I did get sick tomorrow and I had a virus and I went to the doctor, he said, you need to take an, an antibiotic, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna take it for 10 days and afterwards you can say, okay, now you need to take a probiotic. You need to you know, get your gut health back. We've never had a probiotic for our soil. And that's really what, again, our product does. And we'll talk a little bit more about it. But foundationally, if you think of what a fungicide is, what pesticides, herbicides, all those things, have a negative impact on not only the bad bugs, but also some of the beneficials. And, and but we've just, again, never had that probiotic to step back in and, and rebuild that soil after we set it backwards a little bit. But I often talk about this. I mean, they naturally should occur. There's this whole microbiome that should be in your soil. They should naturally be there. Where are they? What happened to them? Well, as we just discussed, certainly one aspect of this one element is what we apply to the ground. If we spray a fungicide, um, it does kill fungi, right? And fungi are some of the most critical uh, microbes in our soil. Um, tillage has always been in the center of this conversation because certainly the bigger bugs, the protus, um, as an example, you can lose half the protus in your field in one tillage pass. Fungi are actually a web that will live underneath your soil. And if you break the web, you kill the fungi. So again, tillage has been uh, a, had a very significant impact on reducing that those larger predator bugs and, and allowed for bacteria dominance to kind of take over our fields. One thing that, that people don't think about, and certainly this season I saw a tremendous amount with the wet spring and, and coming in early summer, um, was ponding. So if you have a field that sits underwater for five to seven days, um, you know, you've starved the big bugs of oxygen. So a large percentage of these bigger microbes are anaerobic, uh, are, excuse me, are aerobic, so they require oxygen. A lot of bacteria are anaerobic. They don't require it. So even though there's a flood, the bacteria will continue to grow, <clears throat> excuse me, whereas the fungi, the protists, and the nematodes will die. So if you have ponding and it ever dries down and smells like swamp, that is the smell of, of dead biology. So again, what can we do about this? Our product is called Bio 800. It's because we have the full microbiome that should naturally exist in your soil, over 800 species of bacteria, fungi, and protists um, that, that really put back into play all the tools that your soil and that plant needs to efficiently and effectively uptake um, nutrients, suppress disease, and do a lot of other things. So again, this is, at its foundation, the probiotic for your soil uh, allows us, when we've done damage, to replace it and get it back up and running. So to explain, some of the specifics here, you've got bacteria as the smallest, fastest growing, most aggressive. Um, they are the ones that are going to immobilize your NPKS. You know, they're, they're really the ones that, that will come in and dominate the field, consume your inputs. Um, they are certain species that are capable of doing nitrogen fixing. Um, if they do a good job of consuming your food and you have a plant that feels like it doesn't have the nutrients, that will induce rooting. So there are a lot of really interesting things that, that bacteria do, and they're very important in the food system. One thing that I will note is, is from a chemical perspective, their chemistry 
is one nitrogen to five carbons. That is a lot of nitrogen for a small bug. So that's a high concentration of nitrogen. So they can be a nitrogen hog. As we move up the food chain, again, this is the next bigger bug. They are a natural um, predators of bacteria. So they will consume predators. They also will protect the roots. They, they actually build a rhizosheath around the, the roots and then start to build a microscopic web out into the soil. And they can explore that soil um, and, and actually move nutrients back to the plant um, through the fungi. So again, these in a healthy environment, the fungi can create an ability to, to actually explore over a thousand times more surface area of the soil than roots can do directly. So again, they truly are a critical piece of, of what, what we do. These are also um, the bugs that that will you know glue together the micro aggregates into macro to, to keep the compaction from going away. They're also the endophyte fungi are actually the ones that also move carbon. So if you have carbon in the air coming out through that plant, these are the ones that move it out of the plant down deep into the soil. So fungi, again, are very foundational in a healthy soil. Most fields, when we first enter them, are about 90% bacteria, 10% fungi. We'd like to see that ratio 50-50. From a chemical perspective here, fungi, their makeup is one action to 15 carbons. So what does that mean? If they eat bacteria, they have to get rid of two thirds of the carbon because it's toxic to their chemistry and they excrete it right in the root zone so the plant can uptake it. So again, it's a, it's a very natural way for the food chain to start to unfold in front of you in terms of moving the, the nutrients in your soil to the plant. And then protists are the largest, they're the slowest growing, but they're the most aggressive predators. They will consume 10,000 bacteria a day. Um, they, they, they are the ones that, that truly can turn up the, the, the notch on, on moving nutrients as that plant hits, you know, like past tassel and corn and really needs it. Um, most fields that we go to have zero protus. Um, these are very susceptible to tillage. <clears throat> and once they're gone, they're, they're gone. And what we're going to do is reintroduce over 70 species of these protus. So again, in the core product, we've got over 400 species of bacteria. We have over 200 species of fungi we introduced, 70 protists, and over 100 beneficial nematodes. So it's truly the microbiome that really gets this whole food chain and gives the plant the toolkit it needs to actually start to move nutrients. So this is what we're after. In the spring, we'd like to put down an input, have it consumed, and then have predators release it. And this is what we're trying to build in your soil. This would be a typical test. So this is called a PLFA test. Um, this is of a, a, a field that actually was in pretty decent shape when we first tested it compared to a lot in terms of ratios. But field, we had, to we had a total bacteria of about 370, fungi of 220, protus zero. We added our product, came back and did the analysis. Um, we've increased the amount of bacteria to, to almost 500. So that's you know a 20 plus percent growth in total bacteria life. We've increased the amount of fungi and we've reintroduced protus here at 6.47. So again, it's about reintroducing and starting to grow that biology in your soil. And, and the cool thing that this illustrates is all of this is measurable, right? So that's part of what we commit to is actually you know, measuring this in your field to confirm it. So we get through the growing season, we have this biology growing and populating because once we put our stuff on the ground, it's really the plant that feeds it and grows and multiplies this population. So we've got the population up and going. Now we go to harvest. We're, we're, we're cutting down the crop, we're leaving behind the residue and, and now all that, that residue is sitting on top. The challenge is, is that bugs aren't gonna naturally come out of the ground up into that residue to consume it. And that's why so many people till to try to move the residue down into the soil. We feel like there's a better way of approaching it is about putting our biology and fall application over the top. And, and then you've actually applied the bugs directly to the stover, to the wheat straw, to, to the bean stubble, and it will absolutely start to devour it. So the difficult part of a grass, the hard shell, the cellulose and ligna, the outside part of a corn stalk, um, fungi are the most effective at actually taking what is a very complex polymer and starting to break it down. Once it starts to break down, then bacteria can join into the party and kind of help finish the work. But if you don't have fungi and protus you know, and their ability to start that breakdown process, as we all know, you can walk into a cornfield in the spring and still trip over those standing stocks and, and, and hurt your toe because they're, they're still rigid. So 
This is a picture 10 days after applying our product in the fall. So harvest right after the combine and we spray our product. And this is the kind of breakdown that happened inside of two weeks. So again, it's breaking the entire stock down, including that outside shell. And the big thing there is we're moving nutrients. So as we think about nutrient value, um, in a ton, a ton of stover comes from about 40 bushel of corn. So let's just say we have 200 bushel of corn, we have five tons of corn stover. You have 17  pounds of N per ton. So 17 times five, that's how much uh, N is sitting above the ground. You got 34 pounds per ton of K, right? So you got a lot of nutrient value in your soybeans and your wheat. So if we can get that broke down, we, we get those nutrients back into the soil so they're available for the next crop year. Um, again, just some other illustrations. Again, within two weeks after harvest, this is the level of breakdown that we're able to, to make happen in with some temperature and moisture and, and our biology, you will truly devastate and chew through um, that silver. This is a, a great picture. This is Southeast Iowa, 200 plus bushel corn, um, two sides of the field, one side of the field on the bottom, we put our bio 800 fall product on the top. We did nothing. We waited three weeks and we vertical tilled both at the same time. The top in the spring, you came back, it looked basically just like that, hadn't changed much. The bottom, you, obviously, even within three weeks here, you can start to see the dirt. You start to see how that breakdown is. Um, but the real proof is in the spring. This is that identical field in the spring without being touched. So you have that degree of breakdown, that much nutrient transfer. And if we're breaking down the stuff above the ground, we're also breaking down the root mass below the ground and we're driving the organic matter in your soil. So that spring, that fall application, which is what we're here to talk about, really takes you through that planting. And at this time, the after harvest really starts to build the organic matter, decompose the organic material in your soil, break down the debris above the ground, move those nutrients into the soil. It is a critical part of, of rebuilding the soil and really making um, your soil healthier. Um, along that lines, this is just a great illustration. As, as you rebuild that soil, you open up the tilt of the soil, you've got good uh, residue management. Um, if you happen to pull in hydrus, and a lot of people say, well, wouldn't you want us to not use in hydrus? Certainly in hydrus is gonna damage microbes, right? Anything it touches, it's gonna damage. But that said, um, it, it's a reality for farming in a lot of the areas that we do business. Um, but if you look here to the left in this picture, um, that was fall applied um, in hydrus and you had no clumping. Um, the debris obviously was broken down to the point you could pull right through it. The tilt of the soil was open. The knives could go and get sealed and run through that field very, very efficiently, able to plant directly back into that in the spring without having to touch it. On the right is, is literally the field right across the hill um, that would be sitting in front of the tractor. And that was a neighbor that didn't use our product. And he was calling and saying, hey, I can't get my knives to seal. Everything's clumping up. What's going on? How are you running? And the difference was organics, right? So um, again, in that field to the right, you're going to have to field cultivate. You have to do something to smooth that field out in order to plant in the spring. Again, creating a, a not only inefficiency in trying to get your anhydrous in, but also adds a tillage pass. So again, this is that field ready to plant in the spring, um, untouched, no till right into that, uh, after that in hydrous going in in the fall. So the product itself, Bio 800, the application rate is a half a gallon per acre on um, both spring and fall. In the spring, we want it as close to planting as possible. Um, again, it can, if you have a liquid uh, system on your planter, it can go in furrow to, or two by two, uh, if you broadcast spray a burn down, uh, you, you do any pre, um, you can put it with your starter so it'll tank mix with anything but a fungicide. So in the spring, we definitely will not be making an extra pass. We'll figure out where to incorporate it in your system. You get it down. But then in the fall, again, if you're doing, um, uh, if you're spraying for weeds in the fall, you can put it in with that. Um, if not, it is an extra pass, but it's about getting this down, honestly, as quickly after harvest as possible allows us to get, keep the temperature and have some moisture and really get the breakdown started in the fall. The bugs will go dormant once it gets below 40, um, and then they'll come back to life when it warms back up. So again, it's, it's, a, it's a process that unfolds over the entire winter season, um, but by the time you're ready to plant in the spring, you should be ready to go. But again, it's a half a gallon per acre, um, $20 per application.
And then the process itself is unique. Again, in our product uniquely compared to any one of the other hundreds of microbial products, the big things that are different are one is the, the sheer mass of microbiology, that bi microbiome of over 800 plus species. Most people have eight to 10, we have 800. The diversity and biodiversity of that, including the fungi, including the protists, the nematodes, most other people don't have any, any of those. They, they lean purely on bacteria and the fact that ours is alive. We ferment this product. We literally feed it, get it multiplying and growing, bring it up to population. We DNA fingerprint to verify that we maintain the species and that we got to the population. We have um, CFUs, so colony forming units. We have a very high life. Um, in terms of the amount of actual living biology um, in, in a very broad spectrum, again, of, of species. Once we get done fermenting it, we pump it into totes, and then we move it into refrigeration. So it's at 37 degrees, it cools down, it gets everything dormant, so it stops eating, stops growing, and we can then store it. We then, before we ship it, we wrap it, um, as you see here, in a foil wrap so that it's UV protected holds in some of the cold, we ship it to your place, it's at the farm, it can be in your barn, we like it out of direct sunlight, so keep it in your barn um, for a solid six to eight weeks. So again, um, in the fall, you get done with harvest, um, we get out there, let's say, you know, early October, drop this off, you know, as long as you get it down by the end of November, um, Thanksgiving, you're good. So again, it's it, it's got a shelf life, it won't last until the next year, but, but again, it is also um, pretty user friendly with about a, a two month window to get it on the ground. So I just put this up here as a quick reference point. Um, there are so many products that you guys are being talked about, right? And there's so many different categories of products between biostimulants and biopesticides and all the fall breakdown products and, and fertilizers and inoculants and all these different things that are out there. Um, Uniquely, this is a third party that put this together. There's one company that actually placed right in this kind of center section where everything intersects, and that's Holganics because we're the one that has truly the, the broad-based biodiverse um, product that, that meets all these unique needs. Um, so again, it's just for me recognition um, of, of where we sit in, in the center of this industry with the most compelling product. So I started off talking about a journey. If I looked at that and said, what does that journey look like? What's the destination? Typically, when we walk into a field, you start with bacteria dominance. You have a low amount of total microbial life. Your organic matters are not where you'd like them. You're getting loss of nutrients to the environment. You've got compaction. You're lacking water egress rates. You're lacking water uh, and moisture holding capacity. You get to the other side. So this year two and three, as we move down this journey, You've now got a very biodiverse you know, field. You've got a very high amount of population of microbes. Your organic matter has moved up um, sometimes one or two percentage points. You're now effectively immobilizing and being able to release nutrients as needed. You've built a suppressive soil to push back on white mold, tar spot, all kinds of you know nematode pressure, and, and you've significantly increased your water holding capacity. So if you look at one percentage point of organic matter is 25,000 gallons of water holding capacity per acre. So again, as you get these rains, like I happen to be in mid-Missouri, we picked up two to four inches yesterday, right in the middle of August. That's gonna not only hit the ground, it's gonna go deep into the soil. So as it warms up into the 90s, you're, you've got deep roots and you've got moisture down there. So you're really gonna be able to fill out the beans, um, take care of that corn and, and keep things moving. So, as I mentioned earlier, the cool thing about this is it's all measurable. So, you know, the impact I'm talking about having there, the fact that we made that transition is something we can come to your fields and actually verify. So we have three different technologies that all of our teammates out in the field have. One is called the Crystal Labs probe. It's a real time probe that we put in the soil, we measure and in that measurement, we're gonna get your bulk density. So are we unlocking that compaction? We're gonna get pH, CECs, organic matter levels, carbon levels, um, all those things come along with then all the nutrient values. And what we want to show in the nutrient values that we are successfully unlocking your um, P and your K, solubilizing those, making nutrients available. We then take at the same point we did that test and we take soil to the to tailgate and we use the microbiometer. And the microbiometer actually separates the soil from the living carbon elements in, in, in your soil. We then can measure the amount of life and say, what's the amount of total life in your soil? 
and what percentage of that is bacteria versus fungi when we're trying to get that ratio to 50-50. And then the final piece is, let's see if it's getting to the plant itself. So we have a technology called Leaf Tech, and we do a real-time scan of the leaf, and it will tell us as a tissue sample what's actually in the plant. So is it in the soil? Are we effectively moving it from the soil into the plant? And let's verify that through um, a test in the soil. So again, this is part of um, engaging with us is that we actually come in and do these measurements with you. So this is an example of a first time user of our product um, with and without organics. One of the obvious things that you'll see specifically in beans is bug pressure. So in a weaker plant, you're gonna naturally have more bug pressure than you'll have in a healthy plant. And when I mean healthy, you're talking about bricks. So bricks is the amount of sugar and the health of the sap of, of that plant. So a higher sugar count, higher amino acids. So the higher the number of bricks, the healthier the plant. So this is a one-time application, and you're seeing the bricks at 5.5 .5 in, in the organics, and in the opposite side of the field, it's 4.0. So split field, you've got that difference. So your bugs are going to naturally go to the weaker side of the field. If you look at the total amount of microbial life in that, 95 on the right on the check, that's a, a very low amount. You know, anytime you're at 100 or, or below, it's a very small amount of carbon living life in your soil. On the other side, where we applied our product, we're up over 200. So we've more than doubled the amount of life in that field. And if you look at the ratios at the bottom, 92% bacteria, 8% fungi, we've now increased that to 72% to 28% fungi. So that 28% moving up, Ultimately, that line four, we'd like to see 50-50, but at 72-28, we've made a significant move in the right direction, and obviously that has already translated into a healthier crop and a healthier plant. Um, this is a more complete um, re re uh, report that we would give, and I wanted to show this one because you know people a lot of times say, well, on weak soil, I get it, but on good, good dirt, does it work? And this is one where the control on the corn was 266, we were able to successfully move at about eight bushel. But again, if you look at this, the starting point on the microbial life is 580. Compared to that prior slide that was at 100, that's a very good starting point. But even with 580, we were able to move it to 650. So we moved the needle on the total amount of life. And in the ratios, um, we went from a 57% bacteria to 43 fungi to where we flipped it to now we're 4852. So this is that ratio we're looking for. Um, and when we get this, what we'll see is, is our ability to unlock some pea, move that needle. We'll see good nitrogen management. We'll see organic matters go up. Uh, we'll see the bulk density go down. So the lower the number, the less compaction. So those are all the pieces that, that we can successfully um, impact if uh, indeed um, we get that life rolling in your soil. So with that, um, I always ask the question, so when's a good time to start to improve your soil? My answer today is that it's this fall, right? So as we get through planting and we've got, um, you know, that, 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 that stover and everything on top of the ground, how do we go about actually um, getting that um, converted, get those nutrients into the soil, start to converting all those roots into organic matter and making something happen. So um, that's the end of the presentation, guys. I do appreciate your time. Um, if you do have a question, uh, feel free to type it into the chat and I'll do the best I can to, to respond. Um, but again, uh, hopefully that was informative. You guys learned a little bit more about what's happening in your soil and what we can do this fall to, to continue to accelerate that growth of organic matter and building of that soil. But with that, um, again, you will get a copy of this from a recording perspective. We did record it, so that'll be available. If you have any future questions, um, reach out to us, wholeganics.com, um, and uh, look forward to answering those. And if there ever be an opportunity to work with you, we look forward to doing that. Everybody have a great day.